All right, in this second introduction slash review to hypothesis testing video, I'm going to spend a few minutes going through an overview. No matter what kind of hypothesis test you are interested in doing, they all follow a similar kind of logic. And you can spend days, weeks, and months studying this logic. We're going to spend about 10 minutes. And then we'll get into actually doing some hypoth actual hypothesis testing. So, but you have to understand the basic logic first because if you just pay attention to the mechanics, the computer can do that. And I can get a computer oh, for you know two hundred dollars these days, and I can get a free statistical program off of the internet, and it can do all of the mechanics and the calculations for me. You, as a human being, really need to understand what it is you're doing and why and what it means. So we're going to just spend a few minutes on that, and then after we do some hypothesis testing, we'll review again what we're doing and why and what it all means. So what is the logic of hypothesis testing? All hypothesis testing that you might want to do starts with an assumption about the world, an assumption about what is true, or an assumption about what is true in a given situation. And we call this H with a little subscript zero that we call the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis. This is our beginning assumption about what the world might be like. And then we go test that assumption, but we but we start by assuming that it is true. What are some examples? Well, in a particular population of people in a city, even though we know that the average IQ of everyone in the country is 100, maybe in this city it's not. Maybe in this city people are smarter or they're not as smart as the average in the rest of the world. And so a null hypothesis could be that the average IQ in a particular city is equal to 100. And we're going to collect a sample of people to try to verify this. So we'd write that this way, h sub 0, h naught. The null hypothesis is that the mean is 100. The population mean of everyone in that city is 100. And we're going to try to verify that with a sample, not by asking everyone, because usually we don't have enough time or money. Um, we could also test that a particular new coin that has been released in a country test whether that coin has a probability of landing with heads up. So the probability a coin has heads is 0.5 could be a hypothesis. We'd write that this way. The null hypothesis, P, the proportion of times we get a heads, is equal to 0.5. So that's a hypothesis we can test. Some coins might be 0.5 and others might not be 0.5 depending on how they're weighted on each side. We could have a hypothesis that girls are at least as smart as boys. How would we write that? The null hypothesis, the average, say the average intelligence for girls, g, is greater than or equal to the average uh, intelligence for boys. So our hypothesis, at least as smart, means greater than or equal to. That's what we think is true, and now we're going to go test it and see if the data supports this or not. Uh, another hypothesis could be that race does not affect the probability of getting the death penalty in a, in a certain country. We can test that. We could test to see if the variance of stock A's price, some stock we can buy in the stock market, is equal to 25. Well, we might think it's 25, but let's collect some data and verify that. So our null hypothesis is the variance is equal to 25. Or we can write this a different way. And we'll see this later on. The variance divided by 25 equals 1. If it's equal 25, then 25 over 25 equals 1. When we test variances, a ratio is more convenient to use. We could also test that the variance of stock A's price is equal to the variance of stock B's price. And we'd write it this way. The variance sigma squared of A is equal to the variance of B. Or 
that sigma squared a divided by sigma squared b, the variance of a divided by the variance of b, is equal to 1. That's another way of saying that they're equal. Or we could, for example, test that the average test score on statistics tests is equal for accounting majors, economics majors, and management majors. And again, you're getting the idea from seeing examples. We could write it this way. The average mu for accounting majors, this is the population average for accountants, equals the population average for economists, equals the population average for management majors. So we first get an idea of what is the hypothesis we're starting with trying to test. Then second, we write down an alternate hypothesis. The alternate hypothesis says that the null is not right. So this hypothesis we started with is wrong and the alternate has to include all other possibilities that could be true when the null is not correct. And let's go through this list really quickly and um, discuss them briefly. This first hypothesis, the null is that the mean equals 100. What would the alternate be if that's not true? Well, the alternate would be the mean's not 100. It's something different than 100. That's all it is. Um, if our null hypothesis is that the probability of getting a heads is 0.5, what's the alternate? It's, well, the probability is not 0.5. It's something different. Girls are at least as smart as boys. What's the alternate? Well, our null is that girls are greater than or equal to as smart as boys. What's the other possibility? Girls are less smart than boys. Girls are less smart than boys would be the alternate hypothesis. Um, race does not affect the probability of getting the death penalty. What's the alternate? Race does affect. See, this is kind of easy once you see a few. The variance of stock price A is equal to 25. What's the alternate? The variance is not equal to 25. But what if we wrote it this way? The variance divided by 25 equals 1. No, oh, I get it. Yeah, the variance divided by 25 is not 1. That's the alternate. Right, you're getting this. What about this one? Variance of A divided by the variance of B equals 1. The alternate, the variance of A divided by the variance of B is not equal to 1. Now, this one's a little tricky. That's why we talk about this. Um, here we're assuming that the uh, average scores of the population of accountants, economists, and management are equal. What is the alternate? It is not, let me repeat, the alternate is not that they are all unequal. The alternate is, listen very carefully, the alternate, and let me type it here, because we're being very specific. Um, the alternate is at least one of these groups is not equal to the others. Now think about the difference very carefully between those two statements. They're all not equal. That means that accountants are not the same as economists and economists are not the same as management and management is not the same as accounting. That's what they're all not equal means. That's different from what we're saying here. The alternate has to include all the possibilities. And so the alternate is at least one is not equal to the others. So it could be that economists are the same as management, but accountants are different. Or it could be that economists are the same as accountants, but management is different, right? So you have to include all those possibilities in your alternate. So that's item number two. Let's go to item number three. You have to realize that when we randomly sample data, we take a sample of data from a population, anything can happen. Almost anything can happen anyway. However, what we're relying on in hypothesis testing is that some things are more likely to happen than others. And so if the null hypothesis is true, we can predict that some things are going to be more likely to happen than others. If it's true that the average IQ is 100, then what's most likely to happen if I take a sample of people 
and average all their IQs. Well, I should get something relatively close to 100. So we can mathematically lay down exactly how likely it is to get different things happen from samples. And that's what we're going to be relying on when we do hypothesis tests. So basically what we're doing is we assume the null hypothesis is true and we say if it's true this thing is likely to happen. So what do we do if our results of what should happen is true we collect some IQs and we find you know the average of those IQs are close to a hundred what is that going to cause us to do reject the idea that the average is a hundred or not reject that idea well if if the average of your sample is pretty close to a hundred then you would not want to reject it that's consistent with the idea that the average is a hundred right so if the results are those that we predicted are likely we do not reject the null however if the results we get from our sample are very unlikely to be seen let me correct my typing there are very unlikely to be seen if the null is true then what's our alternative well we have to say this should not have happened um, this is very unlikely it could happen but it's very unlikely to see this when the null hypothesis is true what are we going to do we're going to reject that null hypothesis that we started with and we're going to go with something different so what we do is we assume the null hypothesis is true we collect our data and then what we do is we calculate the probability that we could get a sample just randomly from this from, you know this far away from the null if it was true and this is the most important calculation that we do whenever we're doing a hypothesis test remember we start by assuming that the null hypothesis is true we collect a sample of data we compare what did we get in the sample to what we should have gotten if the null hypothesis was true and we calculate hmm how likely or unlikely is it um, what's the probability that we would get a sample like this if the null hypothesis really were true so this is the fundamental thing we're going to be calculating later on now in simple cases to get started we always start off with some basic hypothesis tests that relies on a simple kind of calculation so what is this calculation we calculate two things first we calculate from our sample how far is the sample thing sample average for example sample proportion what does our sample say versus the mean we thought we would get in that null hypothesis so how far is our sample away from that null starting hypothesis and this is that that idea of a deviation we talked about so we calculate that how far is our sample mean away from the population mean we thought we'd see for example then the second thing we calculate is how far would a sample commonly be away from the null hypothesis in this case so we get the idea kind of a, of a standard deviation again what's a common distance that a sample should be away from that null hypothesis value if it were true and we call this value a standard error and we'll talk about how to calculate that whenever we do some examples in the next video now there are a few other ways that people calculate hypothesis tests and we'll do this but this is the basic case we're going to get started with in the next couple of videos and then we'll do some other, some other more fancy cases so in part three we're going to calculate how to do a hypothesis test dealing with a proportion 